Alright, so I forgot to run a little video the other night, but I moved uh, the main air box. Um, started disconnecting some of these lines, all the hoses um, go along with the intake. Uh, one of the tricks I'm doing, I don't know if it's the best way to do it, but I am putting tags on things. So I'll have a matching tag here and a matching tag on the piece that comes off. So I have some chance of connecting them all back up again when I finally get back to connecting everything again. So I'm hoping that will help me when I get there. Um, just bought a little box of these tags and just do them up as I go. Um, but I got the air box off. I still got a couple pieces left to get out of there. Take the rest of the heat shields off. So I'm uh, making some progress. I did decide, you can see it right here, couldn't get those ABS sensors off. So I just took them off at the connection and pulled those out. I have to remove this transaxle. It uh, is a bugger, won't come out. So I'm going to work on that today and uh, keep making some progress on this thing. As you can see, things filthy. One thing for sure, so much oil and everything in this thing. It's so filthy. Um, but uh, we'll get this done. All right, so one of the things you're going to run into is you got to get the two uh, half axles out. The one on the passenger side is easy. It's got a couple bolts. And once you unbolt those, it pulls right out. Although remember that it's going to, all the fluid's going to come pouring out. I forgot, made a huge mess. And my garage smells like transmission oil, which is not the best smell. Okay, the one on the driver's side, it was in really, really tight. So I tried banging on it, yanking on it, so I couldn't get it off. So I heard about this trick. So they make a tool to do this. It's like 50, 60 bucks, something like that. So I'm not going to do that. So for basically five bucks, I bought this 3 16th inch wire, ferrules, made a loop, put it around the end, take the other end of the wire, tie it onto the end of my sledgehammer, and then just yank slam the sledgehammer out and away and uh, it popped it right out so uh, that was a pretty good little trick i thought especially because i don't even know if with a tool you'd be able to do it because you don't have a straight shot out of there on the side so um pretty cool trick for five bucks to be able to get something like that out i, I made it a little long and put a loop on it and then i just tied it off and yanked it so um uh, neat little trick could use this probably on a lot of different cars uh, when you got to change these out. All right, so now I'm down to the point starting to get to the wiring harness. Uh, one of the things you got to do is disconnect the starter wire from here in the fuse box, which is just this little screw here, and then you just feed it out the bottom. And that way your fuse box can stay here. And then these wires here go through the body there. I guess you'd call it the firewall and come out back down in here your computer's right there right behind this panel so you gotta disconnect these wires here and then push them all through all right so i'm just about ready with everything now, a couple odd things this is the hot wire the red wire from the battery you have to disconnect that it's got two pieces connected one goes with the wiring harness so you do have to get that apart mine was a little tough got all the wiring harness out just did this these are the shift linkages on the transmission these things are really worn so I bought new ones the new ball bearing type one so I'll swap those out when that goes in um, so now I'm right down to the last couple pieces so I have this mount to do the mount here in the front and the mount on the side over here there's one down here and there's one there one of the transmissions already done and I'm going to lower this down a little bit and then I will um, get that compressor off which I couldn't quite get to those bolts so I figure if I just lower it a little bit I can get to those bolts and I'll be good what I'm planning to do is use my engine hoist and I'm gonna I put the rear bumper support on and I'll put a strap around here lift it up and then I picked up this motorcycle lift uh, from Harbor Freight, it was, you know, all of like 60 bucks, and uh, I'll put that underneath and use that to catch the engine, lower it down, and wheel it out. So that's the best laid plan. We'll see if it actually works.
we should try and get that. It's a little looser. Oh, look at that. Nice. One moving one out the other. back at it today. The weather's finally nice. It got really cold, which makes it very not fun in the garage. So uh, back to work. I've got just a couple things left i got to figure out to get this thing disconnected. One is down here. Uh, you can't almost see them. i got to figure out how to get the cables shift cables connected from they have a little bracket on the transmission and it, I haven't figured out quite how to get it off and everything I read online they um, it's a real pain in the rear end so I got to get those they are really hard to get to because all of this is on top of it and then I have one radiator hose that's right at the back of the engine that I just could not get loose I may have to cut it off and get a new hose but uh, which probably is the right thing to do um, and then I'll be ready to drop this thing so uh, Back in a second.
All right, success, it's out. A little more challenging than I thought. I think probably the biggest thing is I couldn't do it with that cross member in there. I thought for sure there was room, but there really wasn't in the back. So uh, I had to change the straps to the back and then I could take out the cross member. And that gave a lot more room for working with. Much better call. And uh, it's out, it tipped over, it's spilling junk everywhere. Um, but it's out. I forgot to disconnect a couple things, like always. There's a couple cables that were hooked up. I forgot to disconnect the um, throttle cable, and that was in the instructions, and I forgot. And I finally got the two cables removed, and uh, maybe I'll show the trick to them. There's two little slots on the top on either side of the opening, and you have to put a screwdriver in and then pry it this way, and pry it this way, the two sides, so that it kind of releases. But man, that thing's a bugger. So uh, it's out. Now I can start pulling it apart and setting up the new engine and transmission. And uh, apparently I gotta do some cleanup. Um, the other thing, uh, I needed two straps to get around, to, to reach around this, That's which is why I actually used the, uh, that other cross member to lift it before because I just had the one strap, but this worked just fine. Um, I did run into a problem. The garage door was too low. So I had to close the garage so that I could lift it high enough. And the other thing I discovered is that in the front, the front spoiler was pushed down against the ground when I finally lifted this thing high enough to get the engine out. So much better to have some uh, wheel lifts, some of the little ramps. I'll have to get some ramps or borrow some ramps from somebody to give you enough room to, to tip it enough and to get it up high enough this next time. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get it on the ramps, but uh, I guess I can jack it up and put them underneath. So um, there we go. Now we're, that's probably way more difficult than it needed to be. Um, first time for me ever doing something like this, uh, but I consider it quite a success. Now hopefully I can make sure I know where everything went. I tried to tag as much as I could, but there at the end, I just pulling stuff off, so. Um, now I'm gonna clean, well, one I gotta pull, start pulling parts off and setting up the other engine. And I also wanna clean this bay up dramatically so that uh, it's ready to go as well. So, but this is a big, big, big milestone. 